Uh, welcome and good afternoon, everybody, to the Metropolitan Governance Task Force, our last meeting. Um, and we will uh, have some acknowledgments later. Uh, but first, we have some business before us. Um, uh, we'll adopt the previous uh, minutes meetings first, and then we have uh, a correction to the uh, January 10th minutes. So, uh, Vice Chair Pratt. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move uh, adoption of the minutes for January 24th. Discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, the motion prevails. And now we have a correction to the January 10th minutes. Uh, Mr. Thank Chair, uh, there's a correction to the January 10th minutes on the motion for a supermajority. Uh, the vote count was right, but Commissioner's Green name, Commissioner Green's name was left off of the vote uh, tally. So, or I guess the tally was right, but it wasn't accounted for in the, in the eyes and the nays. And so, just to add her name appropriately. Discussion. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. The motion prevails. Uh, now we need to do another vote um, to uh, authorize. Um, myself and Senator Pratt to jointly approve the meeting minutes from today's meeting, because we won't be able to approve those at a future meeting, uh, and then have those me meeting minutes added to the appendix of the task force's final report, and, um, and that needs to be a roll call. So, Mr. Chair, I'd make that motion for you. Okay, thank you. Discussion. Uh, um, we'll have uh, Ms. Kohler uh, restate the motion. Sure. So the motion is Commissioner Bingham moves to authorize LCC staff to prepare and Rep. Hornstein and Senator Pratt to jointly approve the meeting minutes from today's meeting and then to have those meeting minutes added to the appendix of the task force's final report. Thank you. Okay. And uh, we're told by staff this needs to be a roll call. Chair Hornstein. Aye. Senator Pratt. Aye. Ms. Beckman. Aye. Commissioner Bigham. Aye. Senator Coleman. Aye. Senator Dibble. Aye. Commissioner Green. Mayor Hovland. Aye. Representative Cleborn. Aye. Representative Kosnick. Aye. Professor Orfield. Aye. Ms. Paddock. Aye. Ms. Pereira Webb. Aye. Senator Port. Aye. Mr. Reed. Aye. Mr. Rockwell. Aye. Representative Weens, 15 aye to absent. Okay. Um, the motion prevails. Thank you very much, Senator Pratt. Okay, and now we are on to the task force discussion of the report. And I'm happy to uh, call on any member that would like to comment on the final product. Okay, we'll uh, have, uh, th we have three hands. I'll, I, I'll call on people in the order I saw folks. So first we have Mayor Hovland, then Professor Orfield, then Representative Kosnick. Thank you. Mayor Mr. Hovland. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I don't know how uh, we got to the position of um, having the document in this form uh, with the suggestions that were made. Um, I was traveling a, a bit and didn't know, didn't see if there were uh, copies of the, all the proposed changes submitted to all the members. Uh, but I was particularly concerned, <clears throat> particularly concerned about uh, some information on page three. I thought the introductory paragraph uh, needed some work to create a little bit more. Let's just say uh, neutrality. Um, I know that it's represented in the draft that it was a bipartisan group of lawmakers, but um, my understanding of what took place was in the committee that may have been accurate, but uh, in the transportation omnibus bill, uh, which included House File 2092, only one Republican voted for the passage, and in the conference committee report of 521-23, the transportation bill had no Republican votes. Uh, and then none of the Republicans shown in footnote number one on HF 2092 supported the final bill. I suggested for accuracy purposes that that information be included. It's not there. 
you said that. So I don't, you know, maybe I didn't state it properly from my research, uh, but it, it strikes me that it should be there, and it's it's misleading, in my opinion, to say that this was uh, a bipartisan determination when I trace the history of how the voting went uh, on this matter. Now, true, it was uh, the conference uh, committee report. Um, but nonetheless, I think it's um, it was important information to have in there. So, um, and then I also would object to the uh, uh, second paragraph in there. Uh, the creation of the task force is not just a recognition of many prior and successful attempts to reform the council. I mean, the assumption there is that there's something wrong with the model that we have. My understanding was that we were supposed to look at this regional governance model and decided whether we wanted to make any recommended changes. It just kind of sets a tone. It doesn't seem proper to me, and that's why I suggested that the first paragraph just address the fact that this report is a result is the uh, result of the work of the task force, and you take out that second paragraph. Uh, to me, that was <clears throat> uh, more biased in nature, and I, I, I and so but but it's it's in there. It's still in there. So <clears throat> I don't know how we got to the point where. It was decided what would be in and what would be out for purposes of our discussion. But those were things that concerned me primarily. I had a couple other changes, but they were de minimis in nature. I think most of the concerns I had were on that page three, both in the introductory section and in the footnote section to make sure that we were factually accurate on what had happened. Well, thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, I think you only had referenced uh, the House. Um, there were discussions in the Senate. Um, and I think that, you know, the creation of the task force, um, you know, was certainly in a larger bill, but, you know, omnibus bills are <clears throat> sometimes people like what's in them, sometimes people don't like what's in them. Um, I don't think the, you know, necessarily the legislative, we have the, the, the language, I think, of the, um, uh, final, uh, the bill that was adopted as it relates to this uh, task force. So um, I do think that we included uh, uh, in the recommendations in this uh, uh, one recommendation that, that I think acknowledges what you're talking about as well, that there may not need to necessarily be dramatic change. So um, that's how I would respond. And then, Senator Dibble, did you want to? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I would echo uh, what you've expressed, which is um, that there was a bipartisan group of lawmakers who are who were supportive of taking a. I mean, I don't want to speak up for the minority, but, mm -hmm. but I will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, who uh, who supported that element of the package, even though they ultimately voted against the conference committee report. I think it's fine to report that the bipartisan, you know, what, what the partisan nature of the conference committee report was, but that's neither here nor there. Um, you know, if that's what will make Mayor Hovland comfortable, I'm fine with that. But the fact is, is that, um, that, that was, it was a product of a bipartisan conversation. That element was supported on a bipartisan basis, even though the final analysis Many of my colleagues didn't want to vote for the totality of the package for, for other reasons. The second part of Mayor Hovland's argument is illogical. Why would we have this task force if there wasn't some dissatisfaction with prior task force reports and prior efforts? And why would the nature of the task force be what it was, drawn specifically to take a look at some questions that were not well analyzed um, in prior reports? Um, so to say that we've created a task force, even though um, there's some idea that uh, everything might be fine, is illogical. Why would we have a task force if there wasn't some dissatisfaction? We want to take a fresh look at the question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any other discussion of this element? Uh, Vice Chair Pratt. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, I agree with uh, Senator Dibble and Chair Hornstein's assessment of the of the conference committee piece. Uh, to Mayor Hovland's question, um, there was a change in the first part of the paragraph to identify that 
there was a bipartisan discussion for I for studying options and making recommendations to reform the Met Council with the idea being that I, I think to maybe um, I'll make it a little more neutral in the idea that of what of what the goal of the task force was. But from my perspective, what we heard in the public testimony did show growing discontent with the Metropolitan Council. And I think that's, I think that's an accurate uh, assessment. Now, whether or not, and, and regardless of whether you, you agree with the, uh, the, the current method of, of appointing Met Council members or not, I think we've all agreed that there are changes along the way that could and should be considered. So I think that's, I think that's an accurate statement on paragraph two. Chair Cleveland. Thank you. Um, this was not um, an issue that came before the entire body. I will say that I don't serve on transportation, so I, I wouldn't see it until later. But I will say to you, it might just be easier if we change the word reform to the word improvements. And that way, I think we could um, we could get to some sort of agreement that these, law, these lawmakers recognized that there was a bipartisan desire for studying options and making recommendations for improvements to the Metropolitan Council. Okay, um, we're gonna have um, Ms. Kohler look at the enabling legislation just to see if Thank that's you. consistent. In the meantime, Ms. Paddock. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the legislation itself says the task force must study and evaluate options to reform yeah. and reconstitute governance of the Metropolitan Council. Mr. Chair. Chair, Chair Cleveland. But the question is not about what the legislation says. It goes to the intent of speaking. I mean, if you want to name those five lawmakers, okay, great. But to say that uh, the very people who are in, named in that legislation who ultimately voted against the enabling legislation, I think there is an issue there. Did those five lawmakers agree to this language? And at the end of the day, they did not vote for it. So um, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. So I just don't want it to be that everybody, every legislator agrees that reform is necessary. That, that's not the vote they took. So um, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Mayor Hovland, and then we'll move on to Professor yeah, Thank you. All right, I'd say in response to Senator Dibble, uh, the first sentence of the duties tells me clearly that there's uh, an inherent obligation on the part of this task force. Uh, it says this task force must, it's a mandatory term, study and evaluate options to reform and reconstitute governance in my council. I think embedded in that sentence is the notion that there may be, uh, there may be a need to reform it but there also may not be, and that inherent in that is the obligation on the part of this task force to look at more subtle changes than significant reform. So it, it's just a difference of an opinion with the senator as to what this what this sentence says or what this legislation was intended to mean. I don't think that the group intended, the legislature intended to just say, throw the baby out with the bathwater. We're looking for a new model. That would be irresponsible. So I, I disagree with the senator on this one. Um, and I'll just conclude this part by saying one of the reasons I voted uh, for the uh, Beckman motion was to make sure that your perspective, your recommendation was included because I think it gets at the heart of your argument. And so I hope, Mayor Hovland, you'll see that as a reflection of some of the uh, issues that you and Chair Cleveland and I think Representative Kosnick and others have raised. That's why it's there. And so I hope you'll take that as in, in good faith. I do, Mr. Chair. Professor Orfield. Mr. Chair, I just wanted to um, say that I'm gonna be filing a minority report. In part, I wanted just to raise a few issues briefly. I'm reluctant to do this, but I feel that they're just the scope of 
uh, some of the conduct that happened in the committee requires me to do this. I refer to an article particularly by Peter Callahan in the in Min Post, January 17, 2024, about communications between members of the task force, the council, the legislature, uh, communications between the Met Council members of the task force, uh, that, that relate to a claim that I had a conflict of interest in this committee. And, uh, I believe this claim was both defamatory to me and interrupted the normal process of this committee in an improper way. Uh, defamation is defined as something, a statement that's false and knowingly false. Many of the statements were made uh, with the memos from uh, the council of the legislature that there was no conflict of interest. As, uh, alleging that an attorney has a conflict of interest, knowing that is the case, is uh, is defamation uh, in the in the courts of law of the United States. But more importantly, uh, this this claim was made by the lobbyist of the Met Council, two members of the committee, him knowing that it was false, and that raises uh, questions of uh, ethical violations, both under the uh, Minnesota Government Relations Council's rules about truth, uh, subpoints three and four about communicating things that were true to members of the committee. Uh, also, under the rules of the House and the Senate, the Minnesota House Rule, uh, Article 2, uh, Section B, re re prohibits the communication of any false or defamatory statements uh, that are made uh, uh, by a member of the public process. Also, the Senate Rules, uh, 57.2. Uh, just to defend my reputation, uh, the House Counsel said that there was no conflict of interest. Lawyers for the Met Counsel internally uh, said there were no conflict of interest, but the claim was made repeatedly to prevent a line of questioning that I was making. The Met Counsel never answered any of my questions about what form of government it was, uh, what type of uh, authority it had, how it compared. So the, that entire day, uh, the record shows, was interrupted. Uh, this also raises claims under the Federal Fair Housing Act because the alleged conflict that I was accused of making was because I was assisting a group of black ministers in their, in their assertion of their rights under the Federal Fair Housing Act uh, to intimidate a person knowingly uh, in their exercise of civil rights is a, is a violation of the Federal Fair Housing Act. 42 U.S.C. Section 36. Uh, 17 said it is unlawful to coerce and intimidate any person on his having aided or encouraged any other persons in the exercise or enjoyment of any rights protected by this act or by the Constitution of the United States. Intimidation by federal rule says that because any person is engaging activities designed to make other persons aware of or encouraging them to exercise their rights, uh, they cannot be intimidated, and that includes testimony or assistance. So. A big part of this hearing was a claim that was made against me by people that knew that they were false. The Met Council was, uh, was supplying that information. Uh, that is a violation of the House rules, and I think it really interfered with this committee in many ways. It prevented us from getting to basic questions about what form of government the Met Council was. Was it exercising proper authorities? Was it violating the Constitution? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, add that as an amendment and recognize that uh, there are potential problems under the House rules, under the, uh, under the, even under the Criminal Code, Minnesota Section uh, 609.42 uh, uh, prevents okay. these kinds of the statements. So I think it was an improper procedure that the Met Council was involved in, the members of the committee were involved in, the governor's office was involved in, and I think it, it jeopardized the honesty and, and straightforwardness of this committee. Oh. So that will be my minority report. Okay, Professor Orfield will see that report. I'll simply say that um, I wrote a memo to the committee, uh, I believe, uh, within 48 hours of that meeting. I said that uh, uh, I consulted with, uh, with House Counsel that there was no conflict of interest and that we would move on. And I felt at that point, uh, you know, we were able to move on. And um, I think your concerns were were addressed in that memo. I, I was hope, hoped for that. Um, and so I stand by that. But we'll look forward to your, uh, your, uh, your comments. I understand there's also another report coming. So thank you for that, uh, Professor Orfield. And um, uh, any, I don't know if anyone else wants to comment on that. Chair Cleveland. Yes, thank you. And to any articles that have been referenced with my name attached to them, um, I would just like for the record to indicate that 
I made it very clear on the day that I asked that any question that being asked in this committee were to be for the work of the committee. That was the question I asked. The record is clear on that. Secondly, I made it very clear that I was not accusing anyone of conflict of interest. So if my name is included in that report, I ask that it be, restri it be stricken. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, next person on the list is Representative um, Kaznick. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, as concluding uh, meeting for this task force, uh, I think the concerns that I've, I've had have been raised throughout the meeting, so I appreciate and just want to thank you and uh, Vice Chair Pratt uh, for taking on the task force and the time that we uh, allocated for it that, you know, could always be more, could always do be more in depth and all this, uh, you know, we did have time constraints and, and it's not the first time this uh, topic has been um, studied by an outside group of the legislature, but uh, I appreciate the effort. Uh, I thought there was some discussion that was insightful that we don't have time to devolve into during regular committee work, so I think it was helpful in that regard. Um, you know, apparently there's um, the full recommendation or maybe lack of a clear recommendation might be a, a concern of uh, some members or many members, but it, you know there was no con particular consensus on anything, but I, I don't think that uh, the discussion uh, was not worth having. I, and I wanna uh, applaud your efforts on leading the committee uh, and the work that you do in the legislature. Uh, we don't always agree, but I think it was uh, a worthwhile exercise to have these discussions and. Um, for at least the legislative members and those that influence the legislature uh, to help us uh, move forward. And, and I'm looking forward to uh, the legislative session and having some more discussions on what might be able to get done. I think there was some areas of, um, uh, of compromise or consensus uh, on, on a few things. Certainly there was uh, still uh, not consensus on a few of the other uh, recommendations that are in here, so we had uh, kind of a slew of uh, recommendations, and that, that's okay. That's where the task force uh, generally uh, wanted to go, but you know we didn't have a consensus, and um, I'm okay with that, but I just uh, appreciate the manner in which you ran the task force and um, look forward to uh, working with you continuously through session. Well, thank you, Representative Kosnick. I appreciate that very much, uh, and we'll get into some more concluding comments later, but I appreciate your comments. Um, anyone else? wanted to comment on the report. Uh, Ms. Paddock. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think it would be a dream for this committee to have come up with a single recommendation and it would be unanimous and it would go before the House and the Senate where it would be unanimous and it would be, go before both parties and it would be unanimous, but that is just a dream. And no matter what we recommended, if we had come up with one or two or a hundred recommendations, the legislature would still go through its process and have a discussion and cover the same territory that we had covered. So that would be a dream. The reality is I think we have given the legislature some useful tools for solving a very difficult problem. The problem is how to design a whole government entity that needs to collaborate on many levels. That's hard. And we had 15 meetings and four discussions with the community. And we made some progress. The progress we made was, first of all, to have a unanimous vote on what the problem is. We agreed with the legislature that, yes, there is a problem, and this is what it is. It's accountability. So don't look here. Don't look there. Look at accountability. That's where the answer lies. And the second thing we're giving the legislature is a group of recommendations. This is how we think after many hours of study, this is how we think you can solve the problem. And finally, we've said, here are some various models that others are using or that have come out of our brains. You just might wanna look at them as models. I think that is a whole lot of help. And if legislators choose to use it, and I trust they will because this is an important problem and it's their job to fix it. 
So I would say job well done. And thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Ms. Paddock. Um, is there anyone else that wants to comment? Um, um, Professor Chair, Orfield. Mr. Chair, this is making me think we should have gotten you a thank you card, too. <laughs> That's all right. I, appreciate, I, I don't need that. Um, but, Professor Orfield, do you? have a report. I know that you had talked about it. Um, is there anything you would like us to consider? I, I'm, I have, I've been reviewing the materials. I've uh, gotten a, a, a copies of all of the communications through public records requests between committee members and the Met Council. So I will be reviewing that and filing my uh, concurring report on that. OK, it could be filed separately. But I know we have actual another report uh, as well. And so we do have something in writing now. And uh, Vice Chair Pratt. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, there are a group of us on the, on the committee that would like to have a minority report added to uh, the overall report to the legislature. Um, and it's, it really is, is broken down into, into three areas that I think um, have had some questions raised, and, and Mayor Hovland raised one at the, at the beginning, and um, that is, you know, why is gov governance change needed? And so um, talking about that, there's a perception that Met Council members are accountable to the governor, that districts are too large. Um, that we believe there's a conflict of interest between the Met Council acting as the MPO and the operator of Metro Transit. Uh, and the scope of the Met Council is, is overall uh, too broad. Uh, we go into a little bit about uh, the modified COG uh, model, I think, to add some, add some additional um, background that, that wasn't in the initial proposals that we wanted the legislature to be able to consider as, as um, supporting documentation for that proposal. And then finally, some thoughts on the elected, um, the elected Met Council uh, ideas that have been floating around. And just to share some concerns that we have specifically to that idea. Um, again, I don't know that we had the opportunity to really talk in depth about the pros and the cons of some of these and just to make sure that the legislature has that background of what six of the members of this, of this committee felt. And um, we would like to have this added to the end of the, of the main report. Um, Mayor Hovland and uh, Commissioner Bingham. I'm looking for some procedural guidance here, Mr. Chair. So uh, not having been a part of your body, but working at the local level um, with respect to minority report, it, and it's fine, but we're seeing it for the first time right now. And I think Senator Pratt and I, in fairness to him, we've talked about some of these ideas you know, verbally, and certainly acceptable to me that he's able to file a minority report. I'm wondering about the timing of minority reports. You know, So I see this for the first time, I'm thinking, Oh, well, I've got probably some rebuttal to this, some of these things. Uh, or I want to look at them to see if I agree or disagree. Uh, you know, how, how long after the fact today can we file a minority report, or how does, how does that work from a process standpoint? I'm not sure. <clears throat> um, we'll, 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 I'll consult with staff on that Thank question. You. Mr. Chair. Uh, Vice Chair Pratt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, to Mayor Ho Hovland's questions, I don't know that this is supposed to be a, uh, a debatable report. This is the 
Correct. This is the perspective and the views of, of six members who have come together and agreed that this is what we would like to see included in the report for the use of the legislature. And I think it's, it's, it would be improper for us to then allow for future reports specifically to rebut this. Had Mayor Hovland wanted to put together a minority report with his perspective to, to give some additional information to the legislature that wasn't included in the initial reports that could have been done. I should probably respond to that first. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Mayor Hovland. Thank you. Uh, I thought about doing a minority report, but then I, th I thought, well, wait a minute. We all voted that we were going to advance all of these ideas, and these are the ideas that we were going to advance. So I thought, well, it would be inconsistent at, at a base level for me to submit a minority report if I've already agreed to submit everybody's ideas to the legislature. So now I feel like this is a modification of um, what we all agreed to do together. So that was the reason I never thought about filing a minority report. Um, and so I'm thinking if we all agreed to advance all of these ideas, uh, this is a type of report that somebody could bring to a legislative hearing and say, well, we know we did this, but I think here's another idea. So I guess I'd be opposed to the minority report idea uh, in the context of modifying what we've all already agreed on. Um, Ms. Paddock, and then I'll, I'll respond to Mayor Hovland. I have a question for Senator Pratt. Is this intended as an addendum or as an alternative? to the other report? I'm not quite sure I understand. It's, I'm not quite sure I understand the question, but let me just say it's, it's meant to be a standalone document separate from the main report. And I'll just respond to Mayor Hovland um, and, and to some extent, Ms. Paddock. It's custom and usage in these uh, types of situations that um, any member can file a report. We do minority reports um, regularly in the legislature on bills big and small, um, and you know they're just incorporated into the public record. So I don't think this is, um, you know, this this will just be, uh, you know, added as a minority opinion uh, in this view uh, uh, to this report and. You know, it's up to the public and the legislature to, to read it. I, this is sort of custom and usage, and um, I, I think that uh, Vice Chair Pratt is completely within, and, and the other members are completely within their bounds to submit something. And, you know, I would invite both you and uh, Professor Orfield to share your uh, comments with legislators, the public, anyone else, uh, as a response to the report. But, but to the procedural question, Mr. Chair, then you're, you're saying that minority reports would have had to have been in by today, as opposed to saying we can file a minority report, or can we agree as a committee that minority reports could come in within a week, or are we up against the deadlines that we face, and there's no opportunity for that? That's, that's, that's the procedural question. Okay. Um, I think there's a... Uh, an option for you. Um, I understand that you could file something and um, it'll be uh, in the legislative reference library and uh, uh, as part of the, of the report. Is that correct? I don't think it's technically part of Technically this. part of this report, but available on as, a, as part of the record. Yes. Okay, so I'm... I'm just looking, and this may or may not apply. Um, these are just rules that, so um, Article 4, this, I'm on the Minnesota legislator, um, legislative site, and it just says, a minority report must be made separately from the majority report and must be considered before the majority report, and must be considered before the majority report. Um, if the minority report is adopted, the majority report must not be considered. If the minority report is adopted, the majority report must then be considered. And I don't know if these rules apply to us, but this is just custom yeah. and usage. I, yeah. 
uh, we checked with Senate Council, then the task force is not governed by that rule. Okay. So, any further discussion of the minority report? Oh, Commissioner Bingham, you've had your hand. Sorry about that. You've oh. had your hand up for a no, while. No, Mr. Chair, I'm going to use this as more of my concluding comments and, and um, so that I don't have to speak twice unless um, asked. Um, I will say that uh, I'm signed on to this minority report because I believe it kind of reflects my consistent concerns yeah. that I have have, util have said and, and kind of have utilized as to why I really was passionate about bringing forward Senator Dibbles and Senator Pratt's recommendations uh, last week because I really feel past reports have not really generated any reform that is needed. And so I feel that um, while it is great that all the ideas are moving forward for consideration, um, I don't believe um, the legislature will consider all of them. Uh, so I believe it would have been in a better interest for us to choose two that had the most discussion and move them forward. And um, I believe the minority report, report lays out what are my concerns and fears of um, the status quo continuing where we would not have um, change, accountability, transparency. Uh, and so that is why um, I'm signed on and it reflects the conversations that I've had from the organizations that I have represented so. Um, but uh, in my closing remarks, I just want to thank everybody for their participation and their um, conversation, their input, their um, robust uh, conversation that they have brought uh, to this uh, task force because um, I don't believe this is going away. Something tells me in five years from now we'll be at this again. Uh, maybe some of us will be here, maybe some of us won't be again. Um, but uh, I believe that um, even if some of the reforms that are suggested in some of the ideas, um, I believe would move us a step forward. So my hope is that um, the wonderful folks on both sides of the aisle in both chambers that are sitting at this dais today um, will find it in their hearts to take uh, some of the ideas to move them forward even if there are baby steps. Um, because I believe it'll help the region as a whole. So, um, but Mr. Chair and Mr. Vice Chair, thank you for your leadership. Taylor uh, and Sally and the rest of the staff, thank you for your time and commitment too as well. So thank you. Uh, thanks, Commissioner Bingham. And I appreciate how seriously you've taken this. Um, your participation has been very, very valuable. I think both you and um, Vice Chair Pratt and, and others have advanced uh, your, the, the county's position, and I think in, in the case of uh, uh, Vice Chair Pratt, a little bit more than just the county's position, um, on a COG, uh, and it was one of the, as you correctly point out, you know, we have three of the six recommendations involving some form of that, so I, I do feel that that idea was advanced, and I'll have some other responses to other comments you made later, but. I just want to thank you in particular for your participation. Um, okay, others uh, on the minority report. This is not anything we need to vote on, uh, custom and usage and task forces. It will just be included uh, in the, uh, in the, what will it be, the appendix or appendix to the report. So thank you. Thank you. Um, and I think there's some really important points here. and. Uh, appreciate the work you did on this. Okay, to the uh, re report itself then. Um, hold on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I think I stole something from... Uh, yes. So, um, I, uh, I want to thank, um, first of all, um, the uh, members for reading and reviewing the draft report and um, sending some edits to uh, Ms. Kohler. Uh, and I want to note that the, um, the final report was sent to, to members uh, last night, uh, another version this morning with some small edits. 
incorporates most, though not all, of the member suggestions. The chair should ask if there's anything in the final report that the, uh, that's me, uh, if, the, if there's anything that you would like to address or discuss before voting on approval. And the final report is in members' folders, but the appendices must be assessed uh, through the links provided to members uh, in last night's emails. The full appendices is over 600 pages, so that's why uh, we didn't want to clog up your uh, uh, inboxes with that. So, um, Mr. Chair. Yes. Just a quick question. Um, as I had spoken with Ms. Kohler, um, the minority report would not be an appendix. It would be, it would be a section after the main report. Yeah, we can do that. Okay, and then um, I see uh, I see where you're going next. So I'd like to jump in line and and um, thank you for your leadership on this commission. Um, you know, it would have been nice to come up with one or two recommendations to, to send to the legislature, but I think it it shows the, the how complicated of a of a task this is. Why we've and while we've had other task force work on this, this is the first time we've had a legislative task force with legislators sitting on it, um, working alongside of members of our community to to tackle this issue and and I think we ran into the same complexity, that there is a vast difference between the perceptions of the urban and, commu and suburban communities, the urban and suburban counties. Um, again, I would, have liked to have, I would have liked to have sent up one or two recommendations, but I'm comfortable sending up all of them with the idea that we've had a chance to, to discuss the pros and the, pros and the cons of, of many of them. So thank you for your leadership. This wasn't always an easy task. You were, you were challenged with some interesting procedurals, uh, uh, complexities along the way, and I thought you handled them in a very professional and um, fair manner. And I want to thank you for that. And I want to just take a moment to thank Ms. Kohler for, uh, and, and Ms. Olson for their work. They were absolutely phenomenal. Thank you. I appreciate that very much, Vice Chair Pratt. Other comments before uh, Chair Dibble? Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I also um, want to publicly thank you. I think you've done a stellar job, as I knew you would, um, in managing and presiding over um, these meetings, as well as uh, managing you know, the task force's work as it unfolded. I um, also want to thank our professional staff, uh, Sally and Taylor in particular, um, for all of your really, really excellent work. Glad to have you as part of the legislative family and team and hope uh, we continue to see your face around here because mm -hmm. um, uh, you do excellent, excellent work. Sally always has, we know that already. Um, and uh, I also found um, the conversation to be rich, um, in particular um, the public hearings and what we heard from the public um, as well as the Vanguard and representatives of the public, the, the local elected officials. I think um, the proposal that I developed was a direct response to um, a lot of what we heard uh, from uh, town council members and city council members and, and county commissioners and mayors and the like. Um, you know, the, the richness of a relationship that we need to really foster and, and uh, incent between locally elected officials and this regional government. Um, you know, I continue to be persuaded that uh, the nature of the Met Council is very, very different than other MPOs in other parts of the country and that it has taxing authority and, derived, and provides direct services. And so I think my plan also recognizes that, that we provide direct services. We need that kind of direct accountability to the people who are served in the region, not just the organizations in the form of local governments, but we created a blend. Um, <clears throat> um, I, I, I have to say that uh, um, I'm disappointed that we're not advancing a, a, rec a recommendation. Um, I think some of what we saw um, was uh, some folks around this table becoming more and more entrenched in the perspective that they brought to the table initially, and I'm disappointed in that. Um, I, I don't know how I'm gonna vote on this report because 
because um, I just feel like uh, some folks heard what they wanted to hear and, um, and, and didn't show growth and evolution in their perspective on the problem that's before us. And, uh, and I'm disappointed in that. That being said, I'm not super focused or wrapped up in this report. The legislative process and the debate will continue and I'm looking forward to that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, uh, Representative Weens and then Professor Orfield. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think I'm going to start out staff. Uh, it's just a minute, pleasure working with you. Those uh, late hour emails and, and such. Thank you, uh, Taylor and Sally and, and the rest of the, the staff, as well as my colleagues around the table. Uh, it has been uh, an enjoyable, interesting journey for this uh, freshman uh, representative. I also want to thank uh, all those uh, that, that came to our public engagement sessions uh, and expressed their views uh, that informed us and informed this report, as well as those that uh, are here in the chamber today that uh, have been here for most of the sessions and, and spoken to us. Um, and I think most of all the leadership, uh, Chair Hornstein and uh, Co-Chair Pratt, uh, that you have uh, provided uh, us through this course. Uh, as I first started and I took a look, how are we gonna get through this entire animal uh, or creature, as you like to say, uh, uh, Chair Hornstein, um, in, in the few sessions that we have, in the limited time that we have. And I was amazed that we could come to at least some level of agreement and uh, going forward. So I look forward to uh, uh, grappling with this as we go into session with our colleagues, both sides of the aisles and both chambers and, and see if we can take this uh, to a place that we haven't achieved necessarily at, within our group here. So, thank you. Professor Orfield. Well, I, I wanted to thank you, Mr. Chair, disregarding my comments about other, other improprieties that occurred. I don't blame you for that. And uh, I'm very proud of uh, Taylor Kohler, my law student, did a great, a great job. And Nick Negro, also one of my law students, was an assistant. And I'm, I'm very proud to see them serving the public in such a admirable way. Thank you. Uh, Senator Dibble. Mr. Chair, I don't want to um, conclude with a note of bitterness, but I do have to say into the microphone for the record that I am deeply troubled um, by the actions and activities of the Met Council and Met Council staff in interfering in the deliberations of this group. And um, I'll register my dissatisfaction in another time and another place. Um, but I think I need to say it in the public um, that I thought that was wholly improper and totally out of line and unprofessional and, and inappropriate. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, anyone else? Commissioner Green. And thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll chime in and, and, and thank you and our co-chair again uh, on behalf of all of us. And Thank you to the superb staff team, really just amazing, uh, especially given the you know, different visions and intentions and opinions of this group. I was very impressed. Um, also want to thank uh, everybody who's seated here and those uh, members of the task, for, task force who are dialed in. It's been so interesting to have this conversation. And I think that I do believe that we are reflecting a, a growing a, public opinion that there is interest in change. And my sense was that we got a taste of that at the listening sessions, and I do want to thank everybody who participated in that way as well. I'm really hopeful uh, for that conversation to continue past, past this task force. Um, the Met Council has taxing authority, it's spending a huge amount of public dollars, and it really warrants this scrutiny. And I've, I'm heartened by sort of the number of informal conversations I've had out there where as soon as you describe what's happening, it really does light people up and they're interested to sort of think further about this important, important conundrum. <laughs> Good that to have a great Bobby punctuation. <laughs> Good to have Bobby Joe in the room. <laughs> uh, and um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to this, the broader conversation and, and the fact that this really does ignite people's interest with very little information provided. So, thank you. Wow, cell phone. Oh, Mr. Reed, th thank you, Commissioner. And 
Township Board Member yeah. Reed. Thank you very much. And I do also want to thank uh, the staff for their tremendous work that they did keeping me informed. I was uh, in a situation where I needed to participate remotely for all but the last two meetings here. Um, looking back, reflecting, I wish I would have been able to attend more of them in person. I think it would have been a little bit of a different learning perspective for myself. Um, I'm coming to the conclusion I probably came to this meeting with the least amount of firm beliefs on what should uh, come from a final product. Uh, and I've shared this with uh, Mr. Orfield, Professor Orfield, but uh, I probably did change my position from where I was coming from. Obviously, my interaction with the Med Council would be less than a number of yours, but it, in a different way. Um, and uh, all told, the, uh, the minority report uh, ended up reflecting very clearly where I ended up through the educational processes that we all received and the uh, public feedback and, uh, and the dialogue that occurred among people that would influence my opinion. So with that, uh, Representative Hornstein and, and Senator Pratt, thank you very much for all your hard work. Others? Mayor Hovland. When I first agreed to um, represent cities in the Southern County metro area, um, thinking about coming over here, because I've been at the tab and I've long heard um, the views of the counties and, and some of our own legislators on what the former governance ought to be, and I think it's interesting that cities, counties, and the state legislature all have such disparate views of what our regional governance model should look like. And so it'll be interesting to see what happens at the legislature. And I thank you for your work. I thank Senator Pratt for his work. Um, Senator Pratt in particular, who I've had uh, sidebar conversations with, always uh, so um, engaging and um, accessible and um, level. Those are three things I can think of. So. Thanks for that, and appreciate that. And you, Mr. Chair, always, a, always, a, always an even hand. <laughs> I appreciate that. Other comments? Okay, Chair Cleveland. Thank you, and I'll just echo my um, mutual respect for the two of you, uh, both Chair Hornstein and Co-Chair Pratt. Um, I have appreciated all the conversations that we've had. And I appreciate your tolerance with my pushback, as I know that some of these questions will come before um, my committee. And I wanted to make sure I had clear understanding of where people were in their thoughts and in their uh, proposals. I think this work is really important. Um, I did say to um, a person who asked me about, did I believe the time was well spent? I think the time was extremely well spent, and uh, we've all learned from each other. We've all had an opportunity to push back on whatever preconceptions maybe we had, and there is room for making any system better, and I think this conversation has informed different ways that we can make that happen by working together. So um, I wanna thank you for your leadership, and then to our professional staff, as always. Um, you've lived up to that high bar, <laughs> and uh, I just wanna say thank you for your professionalism and your uh, great work in this process. Thank you. Appreciate that, Madam Chair. Others? Going once, going twice? You've got no comments. <laughs> no, I don't need those. Um, well, uh, I will make some concluding comments. Um, first of all, uh, to Ms. Kohler, thank you. We have a thank you note for you from the committee. Uh, I have worked with so many incredible staff over the years, uh, but you really stand out. Um, your thoroughness, your patience, uh, your ability to grasp this uh, issue, um, that many of us have been dealing with for so long. You were a very quick study uh, and just did incredible work in a, in a very short timeline, uh, prepping me, many, many conversations with, with me and uh, Vice Chair Pratt, uh, you know, 
preparing agendas, thinking through difficult issues. You were there. Uh, really incredible work. Uh, I so appreciate you. And, uh, and to Ms. Olson as well, uh, all of the logistical work, I mean, to set up these remote meetings. I mean, it's just really, I mean, the, the body of work <laughs> that this task force did was extraordinary in, in such a short period of time. Um, you know, I would echo uh, the comments that uh, many have made about uh, the complexity of this issue, the, the passion around this issue, uh, the various perspectives that, that came to, to the committee, um, and, you know, the, you know, incredibly hard work that, that everybody did. Uh, to Vice Chair Pratt, um, you know, you are uh, just, I have to tell you how much I've enjoyed getting to know you. Uh, through this process, our collaboration. I was so glad we set this up uh, in a, a bicameral, bipartisan way. Um, you know, you had advanced, uh, you know, the COG idea, and just as um, Senator Dibble and uh, Commissioner Green did, did good work in, in advancing the elected council. I want to thank um, Senator Dibble uh, for really being willing to uh, uh, step off of a long-held position and really listening to the concerns of, of counties and local governments and incorporating them into your proposal. That was really a significant step. And I, I hope that moving forward, you know, we, all, we will be able to blend uh, ideas that were uh, just even in the couple of weeks after people uh, put their ideas forward, I saw some blending. You know, when Ms. Beckman said, hey, you know, you got to add some, some gubernatorial uh, members to some of these proposals. People did. Uh, and um, so, you know, moving forward, I, I certainly understand that, uh, you know, not coming up with one recommendation or two is, is concerning, but I think it does reflect the reality that's out there. Um, and I would concur uh, with Vice Chair uh, Pratt that this is different from previous task forces. Um, I think the extent of our public engagement was different. I think the diversity of views was different. I think the legislative presence uh, to have uh, equal members of, of the parties uh, involved, uh, regional uh, uh, interests uh, represented. Uh, I think having the townships here were very valuable. Um, and so uh, we are advancing five proposals that have not been advanced before in a previous report. And they are significant proposals. Uh, they are new proposals, and I think reflect the um, interest in this task force and uh, the accountability issues that have been raised. So for those who say, well, there's no value in task forces, I would completely disagree. Um, we took a deep dive uh, in an issue that the, the legislative calendar would not allow for. And I hope that the legislative members of this task force uh, will uh, take what we've learned from around the country, from around the region, from each other, and bring that to the table um, as we uh, uh, try to um, you know, address this just critical issue. I think if there's one takeaway I have, it's how much the Metropolitan Council does, how much they impact our lives. And yes, I would certainly want to, you know, compliment the uh, the council on, on on a lot of its good work. Um, we we don't have I don't have I don't have an issue with regional governance. I don't have a region an issue with the existence of the Met Council and its role. But I do have an issue with its governance, and I think that's why we're here. So with that, members, um, with deep, deep gratitude for all of you, uh, I've enjoyed getting to know you. Um, and again, just the spirit of this debate has been really meaningful, and I think meaningful to people who have watched it. And I hope, again, we can take these ideas into the legislature and uh, advance one or more of them. <laughs> so. Uh, or come up with some blend of ideas that, um, you know, can, can 
you know, achieve our, our goal of, uh, of uh, bipartisan um, support for uh, some real attention to the governance of this agency. So again, thank you, everybody. And I think our next, or, oh, I, yes, I think it would be better if uh, Ms. Kohler reads the motion, <laughs> given my reading abilities today. So. so we'll need someone to move this after, but this would be the motion, is that you move to approve the report as provided today with Senator Pratt's minority report included and LCC staff are authorized to finish rep preparing the report and include any technical changes that are necessary. Chair Hornstein and Vice Chair Pratt are authorized to approve and work with staff to submit the final report. Representative Kasa. Mr. Chair. Oh, oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mr. Chair, just a clarifying, um, the minority report of Senator Pratt um, wasn't clear in the previous discussion if it would be entered under just looking at the page three of the report draft, um, I think it should be like at item e, uh, e after additional recommendations and before the appendixes. I would do it as B. Or if we could get clarification where that is. V is its own to say minority report. It would be its own, uh, I think what Ms. Kohler is uh, <clears throat> suggesting under uh, uh, LCC, did you want to explain? It would be V under. <laughs> it just, yeah, if we could clarify yeah. that, that'd yeah. be great before we vote. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Rep Kosnick. We would put it, we can put it as uh, item five, so it would be minority report. So it wouldn't be under task force recommendations because it wasn't voted on as a recommendation, but it would be then an item as minority report included as section five. No, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ms. Kohler, I appreciate that clarification. Um, I am in agreement with that. I just didn't, wasn't clear if it was gonna be kind of buried in with the appendix. So thank you. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Chair. Mayor Hovland. Um, still unclear as to uh, if, for example, I wanted to submit a minority report, does that get appended to this document then as well at a subsequent time or, or could we provide for that? that any uh, other minority reports would be appended to this if they're in by a date certain, two days from now, three days from now? It wouldn't be appended to this report, but we could post it to the web page and it does get... Okay, it wouldn't be appended to the report, but it'd be posted to the web, web page, I've been told. Okay. By LCC staff. All right, and then how would, how would legislators at subsequent hearings know about that, know about any other minority reports? Um, where the staff is discussing that. So we would send it to the library after. The legislative reference library would have it, and then the anyone who would be interested in uh, making sure that the uh, appropriate committee of jurisdiction. Uh, chair or members could hear those perspectives, that would be your prerogative. Okay. Chair Cleveland. Um, so I'm gonna ask this question just as a procedural question because I, I have not talked to Mayor Hovland, so I don't know if this is his intent or not. Um, you were not here when other people submit, you were at another, um, uh, I think you were remote or something, the day that your um, comments came in about the proposals. Are you asking that your proposal maybe be, um, not your proposal, but your comments about the work of the committee? I, I don't remember how you titled it. Um, Oh, that, that's in, that's part of it. That's part of Appendix O, I think. All of the submissions, all the memorandums that were submitted. What I'm thinking is that um, because of my lack of familiarity with the process. Well, my question to you would be, sure. are you asking the committee, I mean, there could be a parenthetical that ended after the appendix that says, in lieu of minority report, but it would stand out in the content section. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't yep, know if that's yep, your no, intent. That, that's, I don't know if that's your intent. Yep, thank you. 
That's certainly one possibility. I was thinking more about reviewing what Senator Pratt had submitted on behalf of counties and townships and thinking about would, this, would cities want to make a submission that would be tantamount to a minority report. I see. And, um, what, and to use your committee as an example, you know, how would, if that wasn't appended to this report, how would you even know about it? I mean, you, you might because you were here and you'd mm -hmm. go searching, but somebody else that's running some other committee might not. And so that strikes me as, I don't know, it's disadvantageous for one thing. It's, I understand. Whether it's, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to say because of, of the process issue. <clears throat> yeah. But I, but I, okay, to the point well, that you're making, Representative Cleavorn, I could take I could take my Appendix O report and ask that that be treated as a minority report. So as part of this motion that goes on the back as a minority report, is that is that correct, Ms. Taylor, Ms. Caller, Mr. Chair? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, Mayor Hovland. We're really trying to do some problem solving here. Um, but I, I do think that um, there are multiple avenues for you to get your perspective uh, you know, on this, uh, including the website, including the legislative reference library, including the committees of jurisdiction. Um, Vice Chair Pratt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, the, the, the minority report is not the perspective of the cities and the counties. The, the minority report is the per perspective of the members that got together and found some agreement. It's not meant to be a debate. It was meant to be uh, an enhancement when I looked at the main report saying some of the, some of the color, some of the flavor was, was missing. And how we came up with the recommendation. It was, it was re really meant to be more educational. And, and, and I guess it comes from the perspective of my locally elected officials and the people who I serve. It's not, I'm not doing, it just as, as it would be improper for me to, to assume that your recommendation came from any one organization. I would not make that, rec I would not make that accusation. And I just wanna clarify that this is not being directed by any of the organizations this is the perspective of the members who sat here, of Mr. Reed, who said he came in with one perspective and, and changed his mind over time. Um, so I would say Representative Weens, he and I had conversations before the task force started, and, and I believe some of his perspective has changed. So please don't assign my minority report to any organization or the work of any uh, organization that's driving that. It's just simply the work and the learnings and the perspective of those of us that sit on the committee. Yeah, understood, Senator. It's the work of the six people who signed off to the, to the minority report. So the question comes back to whether I can take my Metropolitan Governance Task Force comments and turn it into a minority report as part of the main motion. You an offer. <laughs> um, We're not in session. Just yeah. No. Um, Mayor Hovland, if you want to do a minority report, it's not a critique or a response to this minority report. Your own perspective, and if you feel you can do it in 15 minutes, <laughs> I will accept that. Then I would move my Metropolitan Governance Task Force comments previously made be. Uh, made a part of the motion to but be But no, included. we need a, we need a, a written um, 
You have it. PP, it says it's that. In, it's, it's part of Appendix O. It's already here. It was turned in. Okay. It's, it's, those are my, my comments. I'm just asking okay, that so to be turned so we, in. Okay, we'll, so we can it'd be converted to a minority report. if it's in shape. it's already in the recommendations as 01. That's what it's it's in there as one of the options. But right. And that's what I had said earlier. Uh, you, you have no. your perspective in this report, Mayor Hovland. So I'm a little baffled by this request. Um, Vice Chair Pratt. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I think you touched on the question I had. Um, if Appendix O is already part of 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 the report, what we have submitted was in reaction to the report, the main report, some ideas um, that we felt needed clarification that weren't in any other document that was provided to the committee and that was the rationale for doing it the way we did. Mayor Havel, it sounds like Appendix O is already in the main report. Your comments would be available to anybody who yeah, looked at the report. It is indeed. Yeah, no no so question Mayor, about that. So I think the, the pathway to follow, Mr. Chair, would be that um, I take your advice and the advice of staff, and then I, uh, if I want to make a minority report, I, I make it after the fact, and it becomes part of whatever the record is, but not part of, not yeah. appended to the report. Right. That's the way I got it. Yeah, that should work. Because yeah. I think your comments are yeah. already in the. Yeah. In the okay. Report. Okay. Thanks for your patience. Good. I wanted to make sure your interests were. Uh, were um, met. Okay, anything else? Okay, I'm, I'd like to see if there's a motion. I'll, I'll re uh, we need a, a mo uh, uh, someone to move uh, to approve the report uh, as provided today with Senator Pratt's minority report included. LCC staff are authorized to prepare the report and include any technical changes that are necessary. Myself and Vice Chair Pratt are authorized to approve and work with staff to submit the report. Uh, and that is the motion. Ms. Beckman moves the motion. And Ms. Olson will take the roll. Chair Hornstein. Aye. Senator Pratt. Aye. Ms. Beckman. Aye. Commissioner Bigham. Aye. Senator Coleman. Aye. Senator Dibble. No. Commissioner Green. Aye. Mayor Hovland? Aye. Representative Cleborn? Aye. Representative Kosnick? Yes. Professor Orfield? Ms. Paddock? Aye. Ms. Pereira Webb? Aye. Senator Port? No. Mr. Reed? Aye. Mr. Rockwell? Aye. Representative Weens? Aye. Representative Kosnick? Fourteen I two no one pass. Thirteen I. Thirteen eyes and uh, two no's. Okay. Is there any other comments? Anyone want to make any more comments? 
Okay, well, again, many thanks to members of the task force and very much appreciate everybody's work. We are adjourned.